Humvee, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, often referred to as the Humvee, is as versatile as the name implies. It can be a cargo truck, a weapons carrier, an armament carrier, a shelter carrier, even an ambulance. It is your job as a wheel vehicle repairer to keep it functioning. The DA form 2404 submitted with this vehicle lists the malfunction as an engine which will not crank. Always follow the troubleshooting procedures in the order given in your technical manual. This will allow you to pinpoint the problem in the most efficient and cost-effective manner possible. Following the mechanical system's troubleshooting index from the technical manual, first, check for a seized engine. To do this, place a socket and breaker bar onto the crankshaft pulley nut. The movement of the breaker bar when pressure is applied shows the engine is not seized. The next step is to check the starting system, following the procedures for electrical systems troubleshooting. First, check the battery. The battery compartment is located underneath the companion seat of a vehicle. Remove the companion seat battery box cover. The Humvee is equipped with two 12-volt batteries connected in series. Check the specific gravity of the battery electrolyte using a battery tester. In this case, the specific gravity is above 1.250. This shows that the battery is in a good state of charge, but the battery cables may be damaged or the connectors corroded. Disconnect the battery cables before cleaning any of them. Battery voltage can be extremely dangerous and all safety precautions must be followed. Always disconnect the negative cable first. Clean all battery cable connections and posts. Checking the battery clamps as you go for missing parts. Also check each cable for frayed or worn insulation. Then check the continuity on each of the battery cables using the multimeter. If you find a cable which is frayed, worn, or does not have continuity, it must be replaced. In this case, all of the cables are in good condition. After they have been reconnected to the battery, try to start the vehicle. That didn't do it, so disconnect the negative and the positive battery cables and check for continuity across the shunt. The shunt is located on the side wall of the battery compartment. It is a current shunt between the batteries and the starter system. Place one multimeter probe at either end of the shunt. The tone and the multimeter reading both indicate that the shunt has continuity. You must next check and clean the starter connections, which are under the vehicle. Disconnect the cables to the starter before cleaning any of the starter connections. There are two cable connections and three connections on the starter. Use a wire brush to clean the connections. Then reconnect all starter cables, the shunt, and the battery terminals. Using the multimeter, check lead 81A at the starter for battery voltage. If battery voltage is not present, repair the wiring harness. The repair procedures for the wiring harness in the TM indicate that a continuity check must be made before beginning repairs. Double check to ensure that the battery cables are disconnected before disconnecting any part of a vehicle wiring harness from the protective control box. This can cause damage to the wiring harness to the protective control box and could burn you. With the battery disconnected, you can now disconnect the protective control box cannon plugs. 
There are two cannon plugs. The engine wiring harness cannon plug is located next to the windshield washer bottle in the engine compartment. The body wiring harness cannon plug is located under the dash connected to the protective control box. Reconnect the battery cables when the protective control box cannon plugs have been disconnected. Now check for voltage at pin E of the engine wiring harness at the protective control box cannon plug. The multimeter indicates a voltage reading of 24 volts. If there is not voltage indicated, the problem is in the wiring harness and would have to be repaired or replaced in accordance with the technical manual. In this case, voltage is present. So check for continuity between lead 11A at the rotary switch and pin G of the body wiring harness at the protective control box cannon plug. There is continuity. Also check continuity between the light switch, cannon plug F, and the body wiring harness protective control box cannon plug F. Again, there is continuity. This means the protective control box is defective and must be replaced. If there had not been continuity, it would have been necessary to repair or replace the body wiring harness in accordance with the technical manual. Now to hook it all back up. Disconnect the negative battery cable, then reconnect the protective control box cannon plugs. Reconnect the negative battery cable. Then try to start the engine. Well, there's definitely no problem starting it now. The protective control box was preventing the engine from cranking. But now there's another kind of problem. The battery gauge keeps going into the yellow range. Troubleshoot the charging system using simplified test equipment internal combustion engine known as Steice. Follow the go chain tests for the Steice found in the technical manual. First, you must power up and run the confidence test for VTM or vehicle test meter to ensure that it is good. To measure the battery voltage, dial 67 into the test select and press test. The display shows the battery voltage to be 22, which is not within the range of 26.5 to 29.5 volts direct current required. If battery voltage is not within limits, as it is indicated here, start the engine and set the engine speed. Turn on the vehicle headlights and accessories, then Increase the engine speed above idle, approximately 1,000 RPM. Measure the battery voltage again. The battery voltage is still low, so allow the vehicle to run for five minutes and watch the display. Even after allowing the engine to run, the battery voltage is still low. Turn off the headlights, accessories, and the vehicle engine. Next, you must check the charging system. The current probe is used to check the charging system maximum output current. It is installed around the battery positive cable with the arrow on the probe pointing toward the battery. Dial 9-0 into test select on the VTM. Press and hold test until the calibration message, CAL, appears on the display, then release test. Wait for the offset value to appear on the display. In this case, the offset value is well within the required limits of negative to positive 225. To troubleshoot the charging system, utilize the no-go chain procedures for the CIs found in the technical manual. Follow the procedures of the no-go chain until the problem in the charging system has been isolated. First, use the STIs to check the charging system output current. Dial 03 into test select and press test. This allows the VTM to display the maximum value for the next test. 
Dial 10 into test select and press test. Now start the vehicle engine and turn on the lights and accessories. Increase the engine speed to 1,000 RPM and set the throttle lock. Dial 90 into test select and press test. Compare the number on the display with the output current listed for the vehicle. For this vehicle, the M998, the output current should be 50 amps. The output current is low. So shut off the engine and the vehicle accessories. Remove the current probe and shut off the VTM. Next, check the drive belts. Use a belt tensioner gauge to check the amount of tension on the drive belts. If the belts are loose, they must be tightened or replaced. The drive belts are okay, so continue to follow the no-go chain to the next step, which is to check the charging system output voltage. To do this, you must remove the access plate to the alternator. Do not remove the alternator access plate without first disconnecting the battery ground cable. With the battery ground cable disconnected, Remove the alternator access cover to expose the output terminal on the alternator. Install the test probe cable on the VTM. And touch the red and black clip leads together. Then reconnect the battery ground cable. Power up the VTM. Next, do the test probe cable offset. Dial 8-9 into test select and press and hold test until the CAL message appears on the display. Release test and wait for the offset value to appear on the display. In this case, it is within the limits between negative 6.8 and positive 6.8. Therefore, proceed with the no-go chain to check the charging system output voltage. Connect the red clip lead of cable W2 to the output terminal of the alternator and connect the black clip lead to ground. Start the engine. And turn on the vehicle lights and accessories. Set the engine speed to fast idle and press test. The output voltage should be between 26.5 and 29.5 volts. It is not, so stop the engine and turn off the lights and accessories. Now check the ignition voltage sense output. To do this, connect the red clip lead to the switch side of the sensing wire and connect the black clip lead of cable W2 to ground. Then turn the rotary switch on and check the display. The reading on the VTM is now within range, that is, between 26.5 and 29.5 volts direct current. This indicates that the alternator is defective and must be replaced. If the VTM reading was not near battery voltage, loose connections or a broken wire from the accessory switch to the alternator would be indicated as the problem. Remember, effective troubleshooting follows correct troubleshooting procedures. Start with the simple and the least expensive repairs, working through the troubleshooting procedures to pinpoint the malfunction.